As long as United are sh man, that, I'm happy, man. Buying that f***ing Maguire for about 80 million is ridiculous, isn't it? And the last words that, that come out of his mouth was, No! First match I went to was with my teacher, and he was called Mr. Walsh. For some reason, he'd have like, he'd just get like 10 tickets or something. And he'd just go, look, whoever's been cool and all that can come. So we'd go and we'd watch like, we'd sit in the plat lane, I think, and it was like Joe Corrigan or something like that. We'd all be sitting at the back, we'd be about, I think we were about eight and that, with our little sandwiches. And that's how I got into it, kind of through Mr. Walsh. With Pep being there, it's, it's a game changer, isn't it? It's just on another level. I think it just keeps them awake, you know what I mean? All that, all that animated stuff, you know, if you've got um, a manager like, like Wenger and that, who just sits there or f***ing Ericsson, you know what I mean? Just sitting there in the front, you'd want, you'd be like that going, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? You want someone just f***ing on your case all the time, I think. So I think it, I think it does well. But it'll f*** it when he goes, I guess. I don't care whether we've been bought out by, you know, Whoever, you know what I mean? I'd have that any day. We're playing good football and it's, it's amazing. So long may that remain, you know what I mean? Because there's nothing worse than getting beat on a Saturday and you've been beat and your rivals are winning. So I'm in heaven, man, at the moment. If we get beat, I can have the ump for about an hour and that, you know what I mean? But then, then you just get over it, don't you? Because like, you know, I've got like, football's amazing. And to a lot of people, it's the be all and end all to them. And I get it, you know what I mean? They're like sick for a week. But then we don't really get beat that much, so I don't know what that feeling's like these days, you know what I mean? That was a 90s thing. So these days I'm, I'm like cured of all that stuff, you know what I mean? Now we're dead lucky, man, City fans at the moment. I like Sergio Aguero. I like De Bruyne. I like, I like Amal the goalie. I like Silvers. And I'm glad Joe Hart went, because he was a bit, he was a copper in disguise, I think. Him, Alan Shearer. And what's his fucker called Michael Owen? They are proper coppers in disguise, aren't they? I wish kind of City were doing as well as what they were now when Oasis was doing well. And my, my theory is if your teams, you can't have both, you know what I mean? So for me, I mean, obviously I'm doing all right now as this solo fucking thing and that, but which will do, but like, I, I, my fear is like, you can never have Oasis and City doing well at the same time, because that's fucking greedy, you know what I mean? And it was the same as the Roses, when the Roses got back, United went downhill and I was going, Manny, I was going like that, and he's going you know, I was going, I'm telling you, mate, you can't have the both, man. I was going, while you're selling out stadiums, your fucking team's going down the pan. Been there. He went, no, 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 you can't. I went, you fucking can't. And there you go. And now they've split up, they'll probably do well again, so it's one of them, innit? You watch United, United have been, you know, obviously we've not done nowhere near what United did on the Ferguson, but you're watching United now and like, they're just, they're off their heads, aren't they? You know what I mean? I, don't, I can't see that happening for them, you know what I mean? For a long, long time, you know what I mean? Go and get Ollie, man. Have him, he'll do the business. <laughs> They'll have Rio next, won't they? Which would be a laugh. They should just get Roy Keane in just to really fucking kick the fuck out of everyone and cause a bit of chaos. Buying that fucking Maguire for about 80 million is ridiculous, isn't it? I always look at United, man. I'm asked about Liverpool. You know what I mean? I'm, it's United. For me, I look at United scores before City. If they get beat, I'm fucking asked. Tell me later what scores City, what, how many goals City won. You know what I mean? As long as United are shit, man, that, I'm happy, man. And I know it's wrong and it's bitter and all that and it's stupid and that and I must grow up and all that, but they put me, they moved me down. They made me a Londoner. You know what I mean? Through gritted teeth. They ruined my fucking life in the 90s. You know what I mean? I had to come down here and get fucking, get with it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they ruined my life, so yeah, thanks f***ers. I remember beating United 5-1, and I had glandular fever, and I was bedridden downstairs on a mattress, and I was about, I must have been 16 or something. And everyone was going, oh, it's the kissing disease, but I fucking, like, lost a load of fucking weight, man. I was like fucking free stone. I think I was in school, or I might have left school, or I was starting work, and, and I was too f to get up the stairs, so, so my mum made a, put the mattress downstairs, and, I'd be sitting there, I'd have a cup of tea. She'd be like that for about a couple of months. She was going, all right, I'll look after him. But then it was, it's like, Mom, is there any chance I can get some, can you feed some grapes in my mouth? And then anyway, I was listening to the radio, I wasn't at the match, and I was listening to the fucking City match. I remember us beating them 5 1, and I was up fucking out. It was like a miracle. I was up out of the chairs, just fucking jumping about, fucking, fucking gobbing at everything, and booting shit in my mouth. And I think that was the end of it. I think my mum was like, all right, you fucking go back to work or school or whatever the fuck you do. The match just went back upstairs and that was it. But I think it was a fucking miracle for me. Beating Man United 5-1 was the one for me. My mate, who goes round, I can't, I can't want to mention his name because he's fucking talking 
bit in the press at the moment about how he started Oasis and stuff. Anyway, he had a white van. I wasn't working. He's going, look, and he's a United fan. He goes, let's steam up to a, was it a cliff or something? And we're sitting in a f***ing van like that and I'd be f***ing smoking like that. And then Mark Hughes come out and he's f***ing Aston Martin. And this geezer turned around and goes, uh, do you want your car clean? He's going, he looks at us and he's going, he's going, yeah, go on then. So then we'd be cleaning the cars, f***ing whipped out of Henry the Hoover and f***ing yeet, cleaning the cars and, and we did that, man. And he got a proper contract for it and everything, you know what I mean? And obviously I went off and done the Oasis thing and that, but... Yeah, and then we were doing the city's cars, which were all just Volvos and f***ing... I think they were just all Volvos. United's were all f***ing BMs and... I don't think there was Rolls Royces, but there was a few Aston Martins knocking about. But now you go to cities and it's like f***ing stupid cars there now, man. It was more spitting on the fucking just going like that. I can't be arsed going over there. That was the days when I was smoking ganja, so it was a bit lethargic. And you're just going like that, f***ing putting it in that thing with soap and I just go, you f***ing dirty then. And just clean it, you know what I mean? It was none of that scratching the f***ing with the alloy wheels, none of that. And then there'd be a few quid knocking in the glove compartment, so... You'd help yourself to about 30 quid in pound coins, you know what I mean? So it'd be all right, man. I'd be minted, man. So well done, United. It has to be Maradona. I know everyone, like, you know, all the fucking hardcore England fans from Yeovil will fucking, you know, be going, yeah, you dick, what are you on about? You fucking all that. But Maradona is a character, isn't he? You know what I mean? I met him at a party in Argentina. He was, he was in a hot, staying, in this, he was in a hotel that we were staying and we'd done a festival. And then the next minute we were in the bar in the, in the, in the lobby, you know, in the lobby bars. Next week we see about 30 people just scarping at the hotel. I was going, f***ing hell, who's that? Anyway, we find out it's Maradona having a party in the penthouse. So we've asked our geezer, wanted to go up and have a word with him. And anyway, he sent it down and said, right, you, only two of you can come up the Gallagher brothers. So we've obviously fucked everyone off and scarped into the lift. Gone up there and he was there, his eyes were like f***ing moons. And um, I remember we were going, look, let's get a quick picture with you and then we'll leave you to it. And he was like he had this little bottle top and he was like head, doing headers with it. Anyway, we fucking, it was a bit, it looked a bit heavy in there and he was fucking off his face. I remember Vincent Company coming, we had shots and I think I'd been drinking all day and Vincent Company, I was in the town hall and then he Company come out. I was going, come on, let's fucking have some shots and he just fucking walloped about fucking eight of them. I had about two and fucking threw up. <laughs> And he's going, I thought you were meant to be a fucking hard, like a fucking hard call on the booze. I was like, yeah, you fucking hard. I've been fucking drinking since fucking 11. Well, you've been fanning about in the pit fucking and all that. But anyway, he was hardcore. I think I had two pukes up and fucking got carried out. Well, you know the famous one where we'd done the fucking the fire extinguisher? That was one like in Grouch shows. And he was getting, he was going, fucking go on, you got your fucking rule with it, have you? I was like, shut up, you jolly. And he's going, go on, fucking. And he's giving me all his jewellery, like fucking, all this mad gold jewellery, like Mr. Fucking T. I was going, I don't want your fucking jewellery, man. And he's going, fucking, come on, man. Anyway, he was getting, and anyway, I was pissed and he was pissed. And I, I think he's got that OCD, you know, or one of them where he keeps cleaning up, like every time I put a beer down, there's a little bit of wet patch. He kept cleaning it up and I thought, I'm going to fucking have him in a bit. Anyway, so he was down, I was getting off out and I thought, I'll oh, fucking. Oh, I weren't even meant to be in there, actually. I was banned because I was snuck in on our kids' past. And as I'm going out the door, I turn around to Gaz. I said, yeah, Gaz, are you f***ing? And he's going, what are you f***ing man, I just pulled the fire extinguisher out and he's gone, because I know I'm going to f***ing spray the old gaff here now, like f***ing with the foam and that. And the last words that, that come out of his mouth was, no! And I was going, f***ing yeah, you Geordie f***ing off, man. It was like f***ing Terminator. No, I'll tell you what it was like. It was like the f***ing, was it, who's it? In, what's he called? The little f***er. The cocaine film. Scarface, it was just like, ah, f it, come on, you Geordie f***ing And that was it. No! And I just f***ing, he was like Father Christmas, f***ing covered in water like a snowman. And that was it, and I got barred from there. That was a good time. And then I met him another time, but before that time, it was payback, actually, that was, because I met him, I'd lost my voice, and we were doing Lot Lomond, and he'd signed for Rangers. And anyway, someone goes, look, you can't be staying in in, in Glasgow and that, because you've got to go and chill out and get your voice back for these big gigs. So I went, right, OK, let's go up to this nice old cell up in the countryside. Getting out of the car, me and the security guard, nine o'clock, I think I'm going to get in, have a drink, like honey and lemon, all that boring stuff that goes with the job. And I'll get my head down and I'll be up and I'll be all right and all that. So like, as I'm walk, getting out of the car, I'm greeted by Jimmy Five Bellies. I was going, oh, fuck, fuck's sake. And he's going, I heard you were here, man. I was going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, actually, I couldn't even 
fuck you speak. My voice had actually properly gone. I was going, fuck. Tell him I'm fucked, but like, fuck you. And he's going, Gaz is waiting for you in the fucking bar. I was going, fuck you. Know? But I had to walk past the bar to get in the lift to the fucking room. And he's knocking back these tequila shots. Like, like, I've never seen anyone like proper just going for it. You having a fucking drink then, you man? I was like, oh, fuck it, come on then. Anyway, get into a session with him, don't I? But I was fine, actually, man. The booze sort of woke my voice up and that, and the gig was all right, I think. But, yeah, I was telling him, I was going, look, I shouldn't be doing this, mate. I've got f***ing... Come on, you f***ing, you're meant to be f***ing rock star, aren't you? I was going, yeah, but I have. I've got one with a shit voice, and it's not well. But, anyway, that was that, sort of payback time. Glenn Oddle was talented, wasn't he? I mean, I guess so. Letitia, yeah, I guess so, man. Yeah, there's been loads, aren't there, really? I mean, he's the one that... He's the one that f***ing wore his heart on the sleeve, isn't he? The rest are all, like, f***ing robots, aren't they? He's the one that, like... I think he's the, mo he's the most out of worth one, you know? Everyone goes in a bad way and all that, but I'm sure that's, he's the one that seems to have struggled with... ..coming back into the real world, you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, a lot of them are easy coming back into the real world because they were f***ing... ..because they're not... You know, they never really left it, you know what I mean? Whereas he was f***ing phenomenal money, you know what I mean? Prices to get in these days are ridiculous. Not that I've paid and that, but I imagine it being expensive, you know what I mean? And having kids and all that, so they should definitely f***ing lower the prices. They should bring standing back. Whoever these people are that we're talking about, they want that game for themselves, don't they? So they f***ing... They call us the thugs and all that, tackle they up the prices and that, so we can't go in it. They want to bring it back to the old rattlers days, don't they? Right? I'm on this f***ing, you know what I mean? The people that make it good are the people like us, you know what I mean? On all that sitting down He's like fucking. I remember going to City, it was City against Everton. I think it was the last game I went here and I went, I ain't fucking going anymore. Obviously, we got in, it was in like the posh end and all that, but menus are coming out and all that fucking food at half time and like, just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? They're passing the menu around, you know what I mean? And ladies turning around going, Excuse me, can you stop fucking shouting? And I don't think I was swearing that day, I was just like, Come on, I might have been swore, but it was like, it was all, everyone was telling everyone to be quiet. And I thought, you know what, I ain't going anymore. I'm going to watch it from the comfort of my house. Eric Cant and I definitely. He's just got a temper, hasn't he, and stuff, you know what I mean? He doesn't take no shit and I think, um, and he's got a bit of threat, you know, he's just got, I don't know, man, he's just, he's a bit of a boy, isn't he, you know what I mean? Sergio Aguero is mega and all that tackle, but he's not a rock star, is he, you know what I mean? He's more of a, and I'm not digging him out because I like him and that, but he'd be more of a, I'm not going to say it because I love him and that, but I just don't think he, he's a bit nice, isn't he, you know what I mean? He's our Sergio, where well, like, Eric Cantona's a bit of a in here, and I think he'd get away with it. You've got to be a bit of a to be a rock star. Oh, Balotelli, he'd be a rock star, I reckon, because I just think, you know what I'm saying, it's them kind of, them fuckers. Second album is coming out on the September the 20th, I think, the day before my birthday. It's got, I think it's got 11 songs on it, 12 songs, and I think they're good, man. Pretty special, some good music on it. Pretty, it's a lot deeper, I think, the album. This, than the last one. I think it's more like better songs and a bit more, it's just got a lot more soul to it. I like them all, man, but I, I, you know, I haven't played any, a lot of them yet, you know what I mean? I played Shockwaves, The River, and I played Once, and Once, the, Once is the one, I think. Once is a special song. It's the music first, and the words more, you know, there's loads of songs out there with words in it and that, but I think it's the music, the feeling, you know what I mean? That, for me, it's the melody, you know what I mean? Half of the time when I write stuff, it's not really what I'm writing, it's what I want to really write, you know what I mean? I'm sort of just writing it down, I'm going, you know what, yeah, I'll fucking do. But it's the music and the melody, and if it means, you know, if it's, if it's touching in a certain way, but sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get the music right, and you get the melody right, and the words are pretty meaningful. Sometimes you don't get them all, all at the same time, you know what I mean? It's like supersonic. Like Oasis, what the fuck's that about? It's a good song, but it, and it does something, but what is it about? It doesn't have to mean certain things, don't have to mean certain things all the time, you know what I mean? I don't think, I don't think too much about it, man. I've never been one of them people that sit down and worry about where it's coming from. It'll happen when it's meant to happen, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that panic and go, oh, you know, I'm never going to write a song again. I don't give a fuck if I write a song again, you know what I mean? I'll get someone else to write one for me. And then I just go and make it brilliant, don't I? With this brilliant voice of mine. We used to play football on the bowling greens and there with Park and that, and like, you know, you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, your football comes to you, it come to me more than way early before music. Music come to me like when I was about 
18 or something, you know what I mean? If I saw someone walking down the road with a guitar case, we'd just be fucking throwing, bouncing the ball off his head going, you fucking weirdos, you know what I mean? Because we just thought it was weird. And a lot of them people that were in bands them days, there was none of this. People that were in bands were not like this, you know what I mean? Like they were fucking leather kecks on and fucking biker jackets and they all looked like the Cure or the Smiths and that. They just looked fucking weird and that was not for us. We were all wearing that, so we'd be playing football. So yeah, football all the way and then I think when the Roses come along, I mean, and then like, they kind of, on the Mondays and all that, it started, they were dressed a bit more like us, you know what I mean? You go, you know, people like us could be in bands like that. Obviously, you've got to learn a guitar and learn an instrument. But yeah, football was definitely knocked at my door before the music. I think if you get nerves, you shouldn't be doing it. I know loads of people that are throwing up before they go on stage. I'm like, what is it? What have you had some dodgy to eat? They're going, oh, people out there. Nervous, man. I tell you when you get nervous, when no one's buying your records and you're looking at a McDonald's, you know, job trying to fill out one of them, that's when you should be getting nervous. You shouldn't be getting nervous when you're doing well and, you, and you've got to go on stage to loads of people who are buzzing off you, you know what I mean? That's when you should get nervous, when you've got a spade in your hand and you're digging and all. Some days I enjoy the gigs, some days I don't. I know a lot of people that go, oh, it's just the great, it's the best thing ever, every night is amazing, even like when we were, it's just everything's just amazing, it's like, fuck off, you know what I mean? I can't handle them lying. When the music and the fans come together, there's nothing, that, as far as I'm concerned, that can touch it. Main Road was the one, man, for me. The both nights was amazing, because it's your own town, it's your, where you used to go and watch the match and that. And it was before, I think it was, that was, we were kind of new, like we were right on the, we were on the, we had lift off, you know what I mean? And then Nebworth was good, but, I mean, I can't remember much about Nebworth, but it was amazing, because there was loads of people there and all that. And I don't think the gig was that much, was much cop, you know what I mean? That's why it's not come out, you know what I mean? Everyone's banging on about a film, I don't, I don't think we played particularly well, but the event was amazing. But I think with Main Road, we played well, and the crowd, you know what I mean? We had one of them moments where it was just, everything was amazing. I scored an hat-trick that day, and it was left foot as well. I remember seeing a clip of it a bit ago, and I'd been up all night, and I, and I was still drinking, and it was a left foot. And I don't know, I'm shit with that foot. But it was left, and it just went in the net, and that was good. I think I've got an hat-trick. It was more Monty Python vibes on my behalf than sticking the boot in, you know what I mean? But I'm sure there would be a few today that my mother wouldn't now, because none of us can fucking walk hardly, can we, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, no, there'd be none of that, but no. I mean, yeah. No, there was no rough tackles, man.